You are listening to the Toilet of Hell radio show. I have a very special guest with me today. Right now we have Eugene from Ginger. How's it going? Hi, guys. I'm fine, just fine. Just played an awesome show. And, uh, you no know, relaxing time at the bandwagon. So why not to give a good interview? Yeah, I appreciate it. So you've been on uh, this tour with Devil Driver and uh, Raven Black for a little while now. How's it been going? It has been going very, very well. Yeah, I I cannot pick any shows when I felt unsatis, unsatisfied or bad. Every time I go off stage, I am, you know, feeling like really on top because the crowds are very, very good everywhere and uh, the energetics is just awesome. So everything is going very well, as I said. And this is your second time in the U.S. You were here it not is, that long. It is our third, third time. Third time. Yes. So you were here not that long ago with Cradle of Filth. We were with Cradle of Filth's first time here. Okay. Then in the summer we came for a short run. Okay. Mainly because of Heavy Montreal Festival mm-hmm. in Canada, but we played headlining shows uh, here in the uh, east of the United States. By the way, we played the same venue in the summer. Yeah, yeah I remember so, that. Yeah. So this is our third time, right? So have you been able to kind of explore the United States a little bit more and see some things you didn't get to see? Well, so far, yeah, uh, especially on this tour, somehow it happened that we managed to see finally the Grand Canyon and we were absolutely excited about it. Probably the most beautiful place I've ever ever seen. We were um, at uh, Niagara Falls, Mm -hmm. wonderful, just really impressed me. Uh, We uh, were in the prairies in Oklahoma, uh, watched uh, buffalo, mm-hmm. right, in the wildlife, uh, in, and uh, we had some, a bit of time off in New York, you know, checking out the Statue of Liberty and the uh, Brooklyn Bridge uh, and, you know, such sites. So, yeah, so far, we, whenever we have time, mm-hmm. we go and see something. Yeah, you've seen more of the country than I have, and I live here. Well, but you've got a big country, so that's why it's not surprising that quite a lot of people haven't seen this or that here. Is there something that you haven't seen yet that you still want to check out? Well, I'm looking forward to seeing Chicago finally, because last time we were with Cradle of Fields, we didn't play in Chicago, we played in Juliet, so, uh, and we couldn't really, we didn't have any chance to see the city, and I'm looking forward to seeing it finally. Uh, I ho- will have a day off either inside San Diego or LA after we finish the tour before we go into Mexico. So definitely, I would love to go and see one of these two places uh, in Denver. Uh, I would I would really love to to see my friends who live in Denver because last time I was ill and I didn't really have any chance to you know really spend some time with them. And uh, on the way from Denver to uh, West Coast. If I'm not mistaken, we'll make our way through the mountains. Mm-hmm. Would really love to, to see the sceneries. Well, and if if anything else comes into my mind, so far th- these these are the things which you know really in the bucket list. I mm-hmm. would say. In Chicago, there's a few restaurants called Kuma's Corner. They do uh, burgers, beer, but all of the burgers are named after heavy metal bands. <laughs> like Iron, there's an Iron Maiden burger. There's a Slayer burger. If they will, okay. ever made a ginger burger, what would you want on it? Well, um, definitely, if if we are talking about my mm-hmm. tastes, I would say that uh, for sure I will uh, only make it uh, rare. Okay. Uh, tomatoes, mushrooms. Okay. Um, uh, you see, I. Uh, <laughs> Uh, cheese, any cheese? Cheese, on there? cheese for sure. Cheese, cheese, yeah. A lot of cheese, tomato, mushrooms, mm, and the bread should be a little bit sweet. Okay. Yeah. It's a little sweet bread, all right. Yeah. If you go there, you could just be like, I'm in this heavy metal band, name a burger. I don't think we're <laughs> big enough, you know, to One make day. them do, do, do something for us. But who knows? The future is bright and open. Yeah, you guys have been doing really well. Um, so you previously toured with Cradle of Filth. You're currently touring with Devil Driver. You're going to be touring with Soil Work and Amorphous. In so Europe, in right, Europe. yeah. yeah. Uh, do you like touring with bands that you don't really sound like? 
because you're reaching a different audience with all of these tours that may not be used to kind of your technical sound. Uh, I don't. I don't think we have any problems playing for different audiences mm-hmm. because uh, the, the music of Ginger is very, very diverse, and uh, it's just a matter of how open-minded people are in, in in the pit. And most of the times, we feel quite okay. We just people really fall in love with our music once they hear us. Yeah, and uh, how I feel personally about all these tours I of course I enjoy it a lot of course I enjoy it a lot uh, but honestly by this moment by this time I'm getting a little bit tired of supporters and uh, supporting the other bands even though we're gonna have one more in Europe with uh, soil work and amorphous so uh, I believe it's time for us to start touring on our own headlining uh, because I think we've already built some foundation fa- fan bases uh, everywhere, so I-, I think it's time to start touring o- on our own. Well, you're already doing a lot of touring. You're doing this tour, you're going to South America. That's right. You're going to Europe with soil work, then yeah. you're going to Japan. Yes. Do you remember what your home looks like? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm a bit homesick, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, it's, a, it's the biggest problem I have at the moment. The biggest problem of, of my life is that I cannot spend enough time with my family and my kid. Uh, but I try to call them any moment I have. Uh, and, uh, well, this is a sort of a bitter pill I have to take. Mm-hmm. That's the thing, yeah. But on the other hand, once I get home, so I really appreciate and value this, mm-hmm. being home and uh, try to, you know, spend every si- single second worthy, if I can say so, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So how do you stay entertained with all the story? Do you read a lot? Do you watch a lot of movies? Just look out the window? We, we, we yeah, we watch some movies. Uh, I do not read, really. I read, well, n- no books anymore. I don't know. Stop doing this quite, you know, a few years ago. I read a lot of... You know, scientific articles, mm-hmm. something on the internet, just some news, really into science. I would, uh, I love to, you know, catch up with the recent news and recent discoveries, and things like that. Uh, I read musical news a lot. Just watch out of the window because the sceneries are very, very mm-hmm. picturesque, picturesque here. Yeah. So and. Um, used to play some computer games on the tour I don't I haven't taken my laptop with me but we we've got a PS4 with us so we're gonna plug it and play I am I'm really into video games so I would would love to it will be okay really fun lots of fun for me to play some video games on on the tour so So what type of science do you like earth science astronomy astronomy cosmology uh, all uh, I mean all all sort all spheres of science Mm -hmm. yeah so I really it entertains me a lot to you know catch up with these new discoveries, innovations, yeah, and things like that. Yeah, we're always learning more about our world. So yeah, it's yeah, exciting to be kind of a part of all. Of Absolutely, these this is how I feel about that. Yeah. Um, so you have the micro EP coming out. That's right. Um, I guess what was the impetus to just do an EP? Is it just all you had time for, or just you wanted to do this now and then worry about a full? We were later? we were planning to make an album this fall, but we were planning to stay home and make it, mm-hmm. be, be, be making it. But uh, because we had sort of success, we had to, you know, shift plans a little bit, postpone a full-length album. But on the other hand, we couldn't play anymore all songs we got tired of. So we just decided to make something new and at the same time, uh, you know, have time for touring. And AP was the perfect solution five new tracks uh, which of course you know fuel us up Mm -hmm. as musicians and we love playing them live now and uh, at the same time so we have quite a lot of you know free dates to tour that was the Mm -hmm. idea yeah so what's the writing process like for a band such as yourself that does have sort of these technical parts combined with clean vocals and harsh vocals do you all come together and write together? Do you bring different parts and see what works? It happens differently. On this EP, 
just different people compose different songs and uh, on some songs the other members like I have a song I composed mostly myself but Vlad helped me with a few parts yeah uh, Vlad composed the song himself uh, and the uh, mine and Roman's part in it was just you know writing our, our own lines bass lines for example for this yeah uh, and uh, Roman composed uh, uh, a song himself completely and another song uh, Vlad helped him with a, a little part in it yeah and uh, of course on top of this I, I make my own bass lines in these songs and Roman made his guitar lines in my song so it's like working all together and at the same time working independently from the others and then melting it into one solid piece of music mm-hmm. yeah and I've heard the latest single is Ape yeah and I guess how does it compare to like Pisces or I Speak Astronomy like is it a continuation of those songs I know like lyrically it's sort of like romantic sort of a- love related a- Ape Ape isn't that then. isn't that isn't that at all okay. Ape is uh, an angry song Okay. And Pisces and I Speak Astronomy are so sort of. I Speak Astronomy is actually a love song. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, Ape is absolutely different. Okay. It's, a, it's a song of full of anger and uh, full of frustration, I think. So uh, it's not lyrical, it's not different, mm-hmm. definitely the con- continuation. Mm-hmm. But musically, this is the definitely. The direction we have chosen with uh, I Speak Astronomy and Pisces, like progressive music and making it more and more diverse and, and complex, but at the same time remain to be musical, because a lot yeah. of technical bands, they just start making very, very complex and complicated stuff and lose their musical element. Yeah, I mean, you could hear there's still a song. Yes, even though it's still music and not just a chain of notes. Right. So that makes sense. Like, can we expect more of that with the rest of the EP? And yeah, but it, 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 because each of us brought their own contribution into composing on this EP, it's going to be slight. You know, from one song to another, it, it's going to be different. All songs are different, and uh, yeah, the, there is a certain concept for the whole EP it is progressive but in a different way each song going to be di- different in their own way so uh, a lot of our listeners are interested in gear what kind of gear are you using right now me and Roman are using uh, Line 6 Helix uh, he's, he plays the OD guitars from Israel I play uh, SP Stas Pocatillo bass guitar um, for 5 years now He's a luthier from Kiev, makes wonderful basses. So basically, him and I, Roman and I, we are playing custom shop guitars. Yeah, Vlad plays Stama and Zildjian cymbals. Uh, that, that's basically it. Mm-hmm. Tatiana sings uh, Sennheiser mics. And when did you learn how to play bass? When you were younger? I don't know. I started very, very late. Okay. I, I first grabbed bass when I was 18. Okay. Yeah, just just natural felt, picked it up and felt right. Well, yeah, I picked it up and well, felt right and fell in love with it and but you know, little by little learned to play. So I know Ginger's not a political band, but I guess what's been going on in Ukraine for a while, specifically Crimea, um, just in the United States, kind of seeing what's happened over the past few years. I don't know if you can give some perspective as someone from that country if. It's I, I, I don't, I basically, uh, I don't see any. Uh, I know it's a heavy question. Ne- I, let me find the word. I, there is no solution to, to the problem of Crimea. Mm-hmm. No solution at all. It now, well, <laughs> it's a matter of fact. It is part of Russia now, mm-hmm. uh, and. Uh, there is only one thing to talk about who's guilty of that. Who who let things happen like that. And th- this question is still open. Yeah. Uh, but what terrifies me most and concerns me a lot is uh, if you know that we come from the east of Ukraine. Mm-hmm. We come from the Donetsk region, which is now 
an area of uh, military conflict mm. and this thing which I cannot really which doesn't let me you know stay calm and stay uh, find peace of mind because uh, this is a place where my parents still live and all our parents live there and there is war there and something should be done on this yeah uh, on on both on all the sides yeah russian ukrainian their relations in between like and america and europe mm -hmm. as somebody who stands aside but at the same time greatly involved in so because of ge geopolitical issues right. so but, uh, and uh, politicians they just play their own game but average people suffer this is the thing yeah do you think there's going to be a solution at some point there should be there should be but so far no 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 one absolutely no one none of the sides has ever tried to calm it down and put it off no it's just uh, everyone is trying to you know get their political reach their political and geopolitical targets and that's it but nobody cares about people with this ongoing strife with no end in sight would you consider leaving Ukraine no no I'm I'm not considering moving to another country at the moment even though there are some reasons which even may push us to do that but I feel quite okay uh, I, at the moment I live in Kiev mm -hmm. my family is there so even though we are going through a huge political and economical crisis it's it's my country I live there and I I I like living there I cannot say that I am absolutely happy about everything going on no there are a lot of things which piss me off mm -hmm. inside the country but generally it's okay how does the metal scene in Ukraine compare to at least United States Oh, it's very amateur. Yeah, this scene is amateur. Right. There, are, there are no venues, not enough people, actually metal hats who listen to you. So that's why it's very, very difficult for a band to survive it's inside the in the, inside the country. Yeah, but on the other hand, we've got wonderful bands, super awesome bands who can kick ass everywhere they go. It's a problem to go and play, and not everybody is ready to do that. Mm -hmm. But I hope that many more bands, not only Ginger, will break through out of there. So who are a couple bands so people can check them out? They check out Scene Optic, uh, like Scene Optic, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, Space of Variations, Valley Hun, um, Dwells. Mm, these three will are very cool. So there is a scene and people should yes, go and look yes, into it. Yes, yes, exactly. So before I go, I made a little trip to a, a European market not far from here, and I got some snacks for you and the band. If you'd like to take a look and see if <laughs> yeah. they are up to your standards, get this. Ah, it's Zephyr. Wonderful. <laughs> so you know what that is. Yes, it's of course. Yeah. Oh, man. It's so it's, it's great. Like Almost like being, you know, home. That's kind of why I got these things. So yeah. You're going to be away a while. And oh, wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you. I That's appreciate it. Yeah. I, I got one. more. Yeah, give know. us everything. Yeah. We'll, oh, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll eat it all. Yeah, thank you. Some candy. I think I got a couple more little cookies. Okay, wonderful. So that and some kvass. Kvass. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So thank there you. you. Go. I thought a little bit of home for you.